crowd of people danced toward the entrance to Jerusalem, singing joyfully and leading the way wearing a simple vest, rejoicing wildly is none other than King David himself. And David capers with all his might before the Lord. And David is wearing a cloth cloak. And David and all of Israel bring up the ark of the Lord with the trumpeting of ram's horns. What a celebration! The moment when King David brings the ark to Jerusalem is possibly the happiest moment of his life. Truly a dream come true. But why? Why does it mean so much to David to bring the ark to Jerusalem, to place it in his seat of government in the capital city? What's so special about this ark? In order to uncover the secrets of the mysterious ark, I suggest a brief journey through time following the ark and the stories it has to tell. What do you say? Let's go. The ark was built in the desert and contains the tablets of the law, two stone tablets given to Moses on Mount Sinai, engraved in God's hand with the Ten Commandments, the essence of the Israelite faith. Tradition tells us that the ark went before the Israelites in the desert and protected them from enemies and dangers. The climax occurs when the Israelites stand before the Jordan River. The Jordan is raging and there's no way across. But when the ark is brought down to the river, the water rises up like a wall and the Israelites cross the Jordan. And the Kohanim, bearers of the ark, stood in the middle of the Jordan. And all the Israelites passed through until the entire nation had crossed the river. After years of wandering, the ark rested in the tabernacle of Shiloh, and there closely guarded for centuries. But then, the Israelites go to war against the Philistines. In the battle of Eben Ha'ezer in what's now Rosh Ha'ayin, the Philistines strike the Israelites a heavy blow. Thousands of soldiers are killed, and the Israelite army is in trouble. Some suggest using the doomsday weapon, the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark is brought to the battlefield. The Israelite camp cheers, and the Philistines, they shake with fear. But to the surprise of both sides, the Philistines win the battle once again. And it doesn't end there. The venerated sacred Ark is captured by the enemy. The Philistines danced in the streets. They were overcome with joy. They had never even dreamed of such a prize. But then, deadly plagues break out and inexplicable deaths occur in Philistine cities such as Ashdod, Gat, Ekron. The Philistines regret ever taking the Israelite Ark and look for a way to get rid of it. One day, out of the blue, the people of Bet Shemesh saw a cart approaching the city. And what's on the cart? The Ark, returning from captivity with no negotiations or conditions. The people of Bet Shemesh were thrilled to see the Ark. But it turns out even native Israelites didn't always know what to do with it. A plague spreads through town. The people of Beit Shemesh quickly send it to Kiryat Yearim until a proper place for it is found. But what is the proper place? This is where King David comes in. For years he dreamt of finding that place. He swears, I will not enter my tent or home or lie in my bed or let my eyes shut or rest until I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling for Jacob's master. Finally, the longed for moment arrives. David captures Jerusalem from the Jebusites and makes it the official capital of Israel. Now the Ark has a place of honor. And let's put it mm, here. David, along with hundreds of thousands of Israelites, go to Avinadav's house in Gibeah to bring the ark up from there. Avinadav's two sons, Uzzah and Ahio, are given the tremendous honor of driving the cart. But then, just before they get there, in a place called Gorin Nachon, Uzzah, worried that the ark is about to fall off the cart, reaches out, grabs the ark, and dies on the spot. The festive parade turns into a funeral procession. 
David stops the celebration and sends the ark to the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite. The months that the ark spends in his house are a time of blessings and good fortune. David hears the good news and decides to try again. This time nobody was hurt. Thank you for asking. The ark was carried by the Levites in rapturous joy with singing, dancing, and music. King David himself dances and celebrates with the nation before God. The ark finally arrives in Jerusalem and is placed in a special tent in the king's courtyard. Jerusalem, the national center of the kingdom, becomes the spiritual center as well. The end of the journey? Not yet. David dreamt of building a magnificent temple to house the ark. But the Bible tells us that because of David's military past and all the blood he spilled, he wasn't permitted to build the temple. David's dream would be fulfilled, however, and the temple would be built on Mount Moriah by his son Solomon. Then Solomon gathered the elders of Israel, all the heads of the tribes, and the princes of the Israelites unto himself in Jerusalem to bring up the Ark of the Lord from the city of David, which is Zion. The Ark was brought up with great ceremony and awe into the Holy of Holies, the most important place in the temple. We may never know all the secrets of the Ark, but one thing is for sure. For the first time in human history, a temple was built, and at its heart was neither a statue nor an image, but a concept, words that express the fundamental values of the Israelite people, and in fact, the entire world. <laughs>